has appeared to countless witnesses during dissociative episodes or between waking states. Unsettling, these sightings have increased exponentially in the last several years, and witness descriptions remain bizarrely consistent. A shadow person manifests in the darkest recesses of a room. It wears a brimmed hat above a featureless face with no discernible nose or mouth. It towers over its victims, staring, and its presence feels malevolent. Witnesses are paralyzed by fear, unable to scream for help until the hat man slowly fades away, leaving them alone in the darkness to contend with what they saw. Encounters with the hat man have spread like wildfire through Reddit and TikTok. Yet still, we are no closer to understanding what is the hat man and why are so many sharing the same waking night. Hatman is only the newest iteration of an archetype that has existed since antiquity. The archetype of a looming, shadowy figure that appears in the view of sleep or dissociation. The earliest appearance of this archetype came from pre-Islamic Arabia in the form of jinn, who were powerful and invisible spirits that lived in a world that overlapped with our own. They were invisible, but they could manifest into physical forms through shape-shifting. They could become animals, objects, or people. Descriptions of the jinn are even mentioned within the Quran. Many of these earliest beliefs about the jinn share commonalities with the hat man. It's believed that jinn become more active at night. They are capable of harming and even killing their victims, and one specific jinn Al Jathum brings nightmares and sleep paralysis to its victims. The symptoms of this attack include pain or weight on the chest and shortness of breath. Latin cultures share folklore of similar creatures known as incubus and succubus. These entities are similar in appearance, often depicted in paintings as impish and demonic. Victims claim to be unable to move in their beds as these entities approach and perch on their chests. They would experience hallucinations, difficulty breathing, and deep feelings of dread. These entities are also said to assault victims of the opposite sex. Stretching across countries, cultures, and centuries, this archetype has presented in multiple forms under countless names. The most modern iteration of this archetype appeared in the early 2000s. In April 2001, Art Bell conducted an interview with a First Nation elder on a broadcast of Coast to Coast AM. The two spoke at length about shadow people, and they encouraged listeners to submit drawings of these entities. Later that year, Heidi Hollis published a book coining the phrase shadow people in print Hollis recounted witness testimonials from people who had interacted with these entities previously. These beings were described as living shadows, humanoid figures with indiscernible features. They would appear in the corner of a room or at the edges of vision, and they would remain immobile, simply watching. Or they would traverse the space as if they were unaware of anyone else in the room. These stories began to saturate paranormal message boards and forums and they became further signal boosted by additional paranormal authors, investigators, and media personalities. A few years after shadow people were popularized in modern American culture, a trend emerged among these testimonials. Many witnesses claimed that they saw a shadow person wearing a brimmed hat and sometimes an outdated coat. The figure was dubbed the Hat Man and was described as a malevolent being that brought feelings of intense dread. Bizarrely, unlike descriptions of other shadow people, the hat man seemed intrigued by observers, always watching them. 